Hi, I'm Debbie, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie. Today we're reading for October 24th, 25th, 26th, and 27th, Monday through Thursday. Now, if you're looking for the main reading, well, this is the introduction. It will be tagged on to all of the videos. But if you want to look for the main reading or you cross-watch um, or you're new to the channel, then go right down there to the description and there will be a timestamp and you can bypass this all. Hope you watch it at least one time. And also, too, thank you so much. Yes, you can hear I still have whatever this is going on. Still pretty tired for whatever reason, too. But, um, you know, things are happening. The energies are very, very strong. So let's get on with our readings. You know, I'm going to be using, for the main readings, my Radley Valentine Archangel Power Tarot cards. Also, Guardian Angel cards. I will use this Inspirational Wisdom from Angels and Fairies, written by Francis Monroe and artwork by Judy Mastrangelo. That will be for the main. Also, my um, Emily Anderson crystal deck. Now, for this, the introduction, we're going to use my Weight Rider, Traditional Tarot, and my Osha Zen Tarot cards. Now, I pray, I meditate, I infuse all the decks with Reiki energy. Remember, but this is a general reading, so it may or may not resonate. Take what you like, leave the rest. I am an intuitive channeler. I open myself up to higher power, Holy Spirit, God, whoever that is, what you want to call, I say God, Holy Spirit, and just say, let the words come through. Let them not be mine. Let them be the words of the source. Okay, so let's see before we even start. Yes, everybody keeps feeling change, 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 change. And we know that there's a lot of things going on in the world. And we still have that, you know, we have that Pluto and Capricorn, which is all about, um, you know, Pluto, think of that as the uh, phoenix that, you know, destroys and then rises from the ashes. Capricorn, all about home, security, life. Um, you know, that's been there for 12 years. Capricorns know what this is like because they have felt the disruption for a long, you know, for almost the 12 years. It started, um, well, no, it's, it started, what, 2008. So it's been more than that, too. Okay, now, Jupe, I'm sorry, Pluto also associates quite strongly with Scorpio, and I need to tell you that because, you know, we do have, whenever Pluto and Scorpio are meeting in this way, there is a little more emphasis on whatever's going on. Pluto has gone direct, but it's slowly direct. And so that means it's covering a lot of the ground. When, when, it, when something goes retrograde, so here's the planetary movement, and, it, and this is how it appears. It doesn't necessarily do this, but this is the um, illusion or the appearance of. So here it is. It's going through, or I should go this way for you. It's going through, it's going through, it's direct, it's direct, it's direct. Now it starts to slow down, and this is when we call it stationary. So then this would be stationary um, retrograde. So it then slows down to almost a stop, and then it does stop, and then it starts to go over again, and then it comes to where it needs to stop, and now this is again direct, this is stationary, and now it's going to go direct. So, and then it goes direct. It starts slow, and it gets a little faster, but not super, super fast. So it really covers the same ground about three times, okay? One, two, three. Okay, so it covers the same ground three times. It's really getting into the nooks and can crannies of whatever it is it needs to do. And like I said, Pluto is uh, the planet of destruction, um, of, but then it does have the rebuilding energy to it too. So we have that going on. Now we just had Saturn, which was retrograde in Aquarius, and Saturn just went direct also. So it is still in a... It is still in a, let me see, when did it go direct? It is still kind of in a stationary mode, but it is, um, let's see, new moon, new moon, new moon. I'm sorry. Saturn went direct on the 23rd. So it's still on its slow path, and it's still going past. Saturn also has a strong connection with Pluto, I mean, with uh, Scorpio, too. It, they all have different, they all have, you know, connections with the others, but... There is a, um, an interest. Saturn has a strong interest in Scorpio. Now we have Mars energy. Mars has been going direct in Gemini, and then on the 30th, it goes retrograde. So it will be covering that same path 
about three times, okay? So that will be on the 30th. Mars also has a very strong um, energy, uh, a strong connection with Scorpio. So we've got Pluto, Saturn, and Mars all kind of in this slow mo, slow motion right now, throwing their energies really behind Scorpio, pushing it forward. Scorpio too, um, associated with the Scorpion, also with the Eagle, gives you that higher uh, view. It also is with the Phoenix, which, like I said, Pluto has an association with the Phoenix too, and you know, rising from the ashes. Scorpio is also in the south node right now, and I think for another six months, and that means that it, there's a lot of stuff from the past that's really being visited by this very, very strong energy. And yes, I do consider Mars also Aries because Greek and Roman mythology, Mars is Aries, Aries is Mars. So they all have this, you know, they all interwine with each other, but there is a lot of intensity going on right now. Now, I was talking to my sister yesterday about what, you know, what's going on, and I was looking at, I was looking into uh, November, and we have some, we'll talk a little bit more about it when it comes closer, but November, I would say, well, actually, I would say any, the thing that was going on with Gemini, with it going retrograde, um, and again, that was the 30th, and that will be at 926 a.m., um, Gemini, and also too on the 29th, Mercury enters Scorpio at 3.22 p.m. These are Eastern Standard Time. And also too, Jupiter, which is not going direct or it's not doing stationary. It's just retrograding back. It goes back into Pisces. And, you know, this is where there's going to be some planning. There's kind of really deep, um, deep energy clean out with Pisces here too. But um, I was looking at what was going on, and I was saying, okay, October 30th, you know, goes in, and then there's something on the 4th, I mean, the 5th, 4th, 5th of November, very strong energies, and then we have the new moon, the eight, I mean, the full moon, the 8th and 9th of November, and the interesting things, again, it, it involves all of those planets that I'm telling you about, Pluto, um, Saturn, and also Mars, and also Venus, but it also, and Venus is the one that gives a little bit of hope and a little bit of a loving balm to it. But the thing about it is we have, with those planets going in, in November, we also have some squaring and some trining with Uranus. Now Uranus is in Taurus. Taurus will be the full moon. There will be a full moon eclipse, a lunar eclipse. So there is this, with this new moon on the 25th, there is a partial solar eclipse going on with that. But then, the, you know, and that means that when there's an eclipse, it gives a little more strength to it. New moon is a new start. So whatever's going on, so maybe even the 25th we can go on to. 25th to that, to that 9th, like I said, Scorpio's going to be very, Scorpio season has the appearance of being very intense, very um, strong energies. And you throw in Uranus, some of, some of the um, aspects with Uranus, which, like I said, is in Taurus, some of it's trining, that's favorable, and some of it's squaring, so that's opposing. So it's that's where we're going to have, um, I feel like we're going to have the shakeups at that time, whatever those shakeups are, okay? So it's, um, you know, but the thing is, too, when you can see these things, or when you can feel these things, or when you hear these things, it always does uh, remind me, it reminds me, because some people will say, I know things, and it, when they happen, they scare me. Well, when you know these things, and you're told these things, you just have to believe, you just have to remember that God is in control, and because he, she shared it with you to begin with, that means that you are, um, you know, not to be afraid, not to be afraid, okay? So let's see what we have. And again, if I have to pause the video because of coughing or whatever this is, I will do that. But let's see what we have, higher power. So did I told you what, I did tell you when the new moon was, right? The new moon. So, and again, those are very, that's very precious energy. So new moon in Scorpio, 648 a.m. on the 25th, Eastern Standard Time. Um, we've got, again, the 28th, Jupiter goes into uh, Pisces. It continues its retrograde movement into Pisces. 1.10 a.m., um, October 29th, Mercury enters Scorpio, 3.22 p.m. And like I said, Mars goes retrograde in Gemini on the 30th, 
9.26 a.m. So all of these are very early in the morning, too. Interesting. So let's see what we have here. Higher power, what would you want people to know for this week? The 24th, okay. Letting go of something. Letting go of something. Very strong energy saying letting go Letting go of something, things changing. Now this is the, um, you know, this, oh, we've got, actually, we've got three three or four cards out already, so I don't need to uh, pull any more. This is the Three of Swords. Now remember that um, Reversed has a little more energy to it. So um, Three of Swords. Okay, uh, we have the Sword energy. That is our Air energy. That is our Saturn. I'm sorry, that is our Aquarius that is our Gemini. That is our Libra energy. It is our. Um, it is thinking things through. It's very. You know. It's air energy. It is hearing messages. It is. Um, I'm kind of even getting fanning the fire energy here, just as you would with air. Um, you know. It is also making plans. It's also strategizing. So now this is reversed. Okay. So this is. So we'll make this right. Um, a lot of times, this is this is one of those really cards that people go, can we go and just do another one? Because it is about hurting. It is about pain. It is about, um, you know, some going through things that we did not necessarily want to go through. We also have a three, and the three tells us it's about celebration and creativity. It's also about... Um, you know, the power of three. So whatever this was, it was very, very needed, or it is very, very needed. Now, you've got the rain clouds. You've got the rain. It is behind the it is behind the heart. If you've got these three, you know, I mean, it, it looks very ominous. The thing about it is, though, you have to see the heart is very bright. The heart is very resilient. And even though these are three that are in it, it does not mean that life does not go on. It just means that whatever happened had to happen, and we have to learn to move past it. We have to learn to move beyond it. And we might still feel the pain, but, you know, pain does dull. Pain, you know, might leave scars, you know, and these, these swords may never be able to be removed, but it does, it, there is healing, there is hope. And it's kind of, to me, when I see the three of hearts, it's like, you know, maybe you feel like you're experiencing the worst right now, but the worst is either about to be over or it is coming to an end. Okay, so I I don't mind the Three of Swords. Uh, like I said, it's like a lot of the pain, a lot of the suffering that you're feeling now or that you have been feeling will soon be leaving. Okay, and then we come to the Ace of Swords. Again, we have that Ace energy. Again, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. And remember, I, you know, I told you, you know, Aquarius and Gemini, strong energies are in there right now. This has new ideas. This has a new beginning. This has a new way of thinking about something. So while we have to let go of something, we have to maybe let go of an old way of life, an old way of uh, thinking, an old perspective, a new um, idea, a new understanding is coming because this is very cerebral energy. This is very, um, very thinking things through. New ideas happening. You know, and it may not necessarily be easy. This may not be easy, and it may not easy be easy for whatever this new thought process is. But this, you know, Ace One is a new beginning, and again, the swords. You know, the energies I told you about, air energy you know, hearing messages, you know, and it's kind of like reframing and redeveloping your thought processes. So let's see what we have here. Okay. So now, again, this one is reverse. We're going to flip. Okay, we're flipping that one. And this one is an 18. So we have a 1-8. So we had a 3-1, one, 1-8. One, um, 1 is a new beginning, 10-8 transitional energy eight is unlimited opportunities and possibilities we do have the new moon on the 25th so it, it is the start of something you know the new moon brings a start so there could be a, a start to whatever this process is it could be a start to healing a start to re, you know revelation type of energy uh, you know hearing the new idea the new plans um, the moon again the moon is always interesting because it means that there, there are things that you don't always know. 
There are things that are hidden. There are things that are very celestial. There are things that are very lunar. Now, moon energy is the um, is a feminine energy. It is a you know it is very closely asso- associated with our water energy. So we have. You know, we have some of these creatures of the night looking up at the moon. The moon is not necessarily, um, you know, sometimes I get really good energy with the moon. Uh, But this moon, I don't really, I feel like it's looking down. It's not necessarily pleased. There is kind of a sun, so this could be a, um, this could be the partial solar eclipse even energy here. And it's, you know, the, the creatures of the night are coming out. Uh, and it's all. It could also be that um, you know, there the moon is going to sh- shine on that. It's going to bring out the hidden energies, the hidden, the things that have been hidden. So we will see. And our last card, and again, this is reversed. So we've had what all th- were all of these reversed? Maybe this one was not, but this one is. Now we have a two. Two is a um, is a joining together is a crossroad is decisions this is the high priestess the high priestess does talk about you know does talk to you about connecting with your higher power is is that oracle in many many ways is the one that you know you you know you don't even have to come it's not like you have to come to me to ask me you know what's going on you can even take moment take time to connect with higher power in order for you to understand that. Again, we have feminine energy here. We have a lot of a lot of what is considered holy energy, okay? We have a lot of what is considered holy energy here. And, you know, there is this, you know, this thought and then we even have the crescent moon here. Uh, so again, that could be a new moon, could be. So maybe the 25th is going to be the start of a start of the healing, start of the letting go, starting start of the discovery. Not quite sure, but it does, um, you know, it does say to um, really, you know, connect, connect with higher power, keep your light bright, keep your vibrations very high. Also, the nice thing about the high priestess is she doesn't overwhelm you. I mean, sometimes she'll stretch you a little bit, but she doesn't overwhelm you with things you don't need, okay? You know, like sometimes it's like, you know, I'll get messages and I'm like, well, why can't I know more? Why can't I know how this resolves? And the answers that, I'm, that I've been given pretty much all the time is, if you knew more, if you knew how this all resolved, you would not want to get out of bed. So... Just, you know, because it would be too overwhelming, too overwhelming for our humanity. So I would say that there's going to be some mysterious energies. Connect with, connect with God, Holy Spirit, whoever that is for you. New ideas, new information coming through. And, it, you know, that could be um, pain that is, that is here is going to be moving and lifting. Uh, it could mean, you know, we're going to have, it could be, a, I don't see it as a fresh pain. And the, the reason I don't see this is going to sound gross. But you see these three, the three okay, the uh, clouds and the rain is behind this, right? If this was a fresh pain, this heart would be gross, okay? We would be seeing a lot of gross things. This heart is a healthy color. There is no blood seeping or anything from these wounds. Uh, So that tells me that this has been for a while and that there is, even though it is not healed, there is healing energy in this. Okay? Sorry, didn't want to gross you out with my, uh, my, you know, from my nursing background. So it's like, you know, if if there were three swords in this heart and and you got, it would just be an old bloody mess. And then I would say, let, let's pull another one. Let's pull another one. So let's see what we've got going. Osha Zentero. Can you kind of add to any of this? So there's a lot of there's a lot of um, spiritual energy next week, or I should say the 24th to the 27th. There is a lot of thought processes. I would say that there is going to be. You know, remember to what I always say about Saturn in Aquarius, and now that it's going back over some of the same ground. It is, you know, this is this is reality. This is truth versus illusion. Truth versus lies. Reality versus illusion. Okay, so there. But the moon, the moon will show you just enough. Um, you might have to make your own way. 
connect with your higher uh your high priestess connect with your higher self on that too so interesting energies with those two so let's see and you you know you can always comment and tell me what you're thinking this is all about let's see osha zentero what do you have for us what do you have for us here we go abundance well i like the abundance card i do like the abundance card I think this would be like that king of, uh, I think this would be the king of pentacle energy. I think this is, but I get a little bit, you know, off with these cards too. But this is abundance. This is, there is a rainbow energy around. Now that could be, that's a full, it's moon, moon energy all around us too. There is, you know, kind of being lifted up. It's saying, you know, so there is abundance coming. It's just kind of, you know, some of these are the steps we have to go through, we have to experience before the abundance actually comes to us. So, um, you know, this person looks well fed. This person looks pretty happy. This is very male energy, masculine energy. So, you know, the thing is, even though this is all happening, there is a promise of abundance to come. I know sometimes it doesn't seem like it, but then you know what? I've lived a long time, and it's like many of my worries, uh, once, I get th once I went through what it is to the other side, I was like, oh, now I understand. Now I understand. So, you know, I'm going to tell you, you know, be, don't be afraid. We live, in a, we live in a tough world. The world is not for wimps. But we are, um, I'm going to say we are um, star seeds. We are light workers. We have, many of us have spirit guides, connections with higher power. So have faith, believe, and just um, just keep pushing forward. Okay? Okay. Now, I'm going to go to that part that says, you know, please like, share, subscribe, click on the bell for notifications. You know, just being off even that one time, it just really messes things up for me. So please like, like, like. Also, too, with the, um, with the uh, bell and it's subscribing, Many, many people tell me that they subscribe. They don't see my videos popping up. Uh, so they have to unsubscribe and then subscribe again. The same thing with the bell. Okay. Anyway, why don't we now start our readings? Hello, my Capricorns. So this is some very interesting energies, very heavy energies for you. It should really be, I kind of feel like it's, sharpening your senses it's really focusing you on where and what you want and when capricorn gets focused get out of capricorn's way so let's see let's see what we have here um let's yeah let's see what we have here for my capricorns right now higher power what do you have for my capricorns i like i said i feel very Focused energy, what, you know, you know, you know, there's just like, get just out of my way. I want what I want, what I want. However, it's not necessarily going to be something that's going to be majorly selfish type of energy, you know, type of uh, wants. It's like, you know, it just feels like enough is enough and I want what I want. So let's see what we have here. And this is, I'm going to say, this is more for the entire, I would say for the good part of Scorpio season at least until we get to that November 10th, 12th situation, whatever that's all about. Okay, reversed. First card for my cappies is the Six of Raphael. So nostalgia, looking back, thinking back on how life used to be, how life once was, or dreams of how you wanted life to be. Six is the number of man. It's the energies you put into something. Raphael is your water energy, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, fluid and emotional energy, swirling energy, spiritual energy. Now the other thing too is, and I really didn't talk about this in the intro or even for the other signs, this is also a very um, metaphysical time of year, okay? So I do feel, I feel these swirling type of energies. I feel like just as the leaves swirl around, the uh, energies, your spirit guides, your memories, your past energies, your ancestors, I feel like they're all, you know, and which is not necessarily easy for an earth sign, but it's all swirling and it's all trying to create some changes for you. And, you know, you may feel like you're in charge of this, but it's like you're being you're being guided. You're being guided in many different ways. Okay, so six of Raphael, embrace your inner child, 
new friends or rekindled relationships, children or childhood. Like I said, I feel like there's a, you know, there's the physical, there's the metaphysical. You may, Capricorns and Earth energy, so you tend to want the physical. But you're also, you're the goat fish. So the goat, the goat, think of the goat. The goat can climb up and get into any space, and you're like, how'd you even get up there? You know, and then there's that fish part, which is that spiritual part of you. Okay, so part of you climbing up to wherever that is, is just through faith, knowing that you're not going to fall. And if you do fall, you'll be caught. Okay, so there is a faith um, base to you too. So, but you tend to want to see it, to believe it, but you feel deeply. So again, I feel like there, you're being you're being spiritually led. This is a spiritually leading time for you. Okay, next card, again reversed, is decision. So, 15, 15, 1, 5, 5, 5, 5, change, 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 1, new beginnings, 5 again, change, could be positive, negative, 1 plus 5 is a 6, 6, you know, number of man, decision time. Um, decision, this is also the devil energy, the devil card in the traditional tarot, but this is where you decide whether to stay in your chains, whether you let situation uh, you know, change you, or whether you take the ropes in your hands, whether you break those chains, whether you say, again, enough is enough, and you move past the fear, okay? Like, you know what? I am so tired of living in fear. I am so tired of being emotionally blackmailed. I am so tired. I have to move, I have to move out of this. So, Again, whatever this is, this is just one of those awakening type of energies. That's just like enough is enough, and I need to make my plans. Not to be rash, not to be hasty. You know, you need to make your plans, especially if you're in a you know in a uh, precarious situation. I'm always saying you don't leave a job unless you've got a job. But it's always you know in my Capricorns, you can think things through. You're very wise, and even and there's a little bit of luck. There's a little bit of faith. A lot of faith, I should say, and there's a lot of being guided with this time. Anyway, decision, the devil card is facing fears, facing fears, and just kind of like, you know what, I have to move on because I don't really like where I'm at, okay? So, release yourself from that which holds you back. Now, that would go with that three of swords in the beginning, too. A need to detox, unnecessary worry based on a lack of self confidence so you see these little birdies here they're all flying away and this one's like but what if, i don't know what's out there but that's part of the that's part of life you, we don't know what's out there so release yourself again that's a good time you know in the waning moon is a good time to release next card reversed the emperor so we have that four energy we have archangel uriel the emperor also brings me a um, masculine divine energy. Archangel Uriel is very wise, sees wisdom, also brings light to dark areas. You know, kind of like, you know, so if you're fearful of something, ask Archangel Uriel to show you what it is that you're afraid of and why you might be afraid and to help you move past that fear, okay? The emperor is a ruling energy. The emperor is a guiding energy that says, hey, follow my path. We'll get you where you need to go. Anyway, um, for leadership, organization, also stability. Stability and efficiency, taking charge of a situation, ambitious plan. So basically, it's kind of like what, you know, you're able to release yourself and you're, taking, you're feeling like you're finally taking some charge over your life. And again, it's, uh, you know, like I said, ask, ask God, ask Source. Ask whoever this is that's kind of like swirling you through. Um, you know, ask Archangel Uriel, what is it that I'm afraid of and what is past that? You know, because I am tired of being afraid. I am tired of being in these chains. And these chains are, are what I have made. So, let's see. I like that, taking charge of a situation. It's been a while since you felt like you've really had like you've been in charge. And I think this is because of the Pluto stuff that's going on up there. Okay, guardian angels, what do we have for our Capricorns? What do we have for our Capricorns? Here we go, reversed. 
four of thought. So you have another four here. Four of thought is four of air, air, Libra, Aquarius, Gemini. You know all about what's going on in all of those. Rest. You, you know, rest. Let, let life work its way through. Let things happen. Stop being so afraid. Stop letting your mind have so much anxiety. Remember what I say. You live in the past, you're prone to depression. You live too much in the future, you're prone to anxiety. Be in the present. Be in the present and rest. Spend time in nature listening for guidance from your angel and your own, your angels and your own inner voice. And I really feel like it's very strong around you right now, my Capricorns. Because overanalyzing the situation won't provide the answers you're seeking. Consider taking a vacation or a small break to help you rejuvenate and become clear on what your next step should be. Meditation can be very helpful. And it really can. It truly, truly can. It's not always easy to find that time. All you really need is five minutes when you're going to sleep. Even then, okay? So, inspirational wisdom from our angels and fairies. Let's see what we've got here for my Capricorns. Dealers, shuffle, 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 shuffle. Capricorns, Capricorns, Capricorns. Here, here, here. Here we go. Water, Lily, Fairy. Oh, how pr she's resting. Stop taking directions from others that are not right for you. Gather your thoughts and start to walk your own pathway. Oh, wow, that does talk about this. Take in charge of a situation. Gather your thoughts and start to walk your own pathway. I like that. Okay, what crystal or energy would be helpful for my... Wonderful Capricorns, my Cappies. Cappy, Cappy, Cappies. Here we go. Reversed. Clear Quartz. This is an amazing um, crystal. You can program it. Okay. Psychic abilities, enhanced intuition, mental clarity, magnified energy. And if, you, if you're looking for clarification, if you're looking for love, if you're looking for money... Okay, anyway, my Capricorns, take a moment, please, to like, share, subscribe, click on the bell for notifications. It's really important, especially since I miss one. It, it just messes up everything. Um, and if you're not getting anything from me, then unclick and click again. Anyway, my Capricorns, most importantly, always know that you are loved. Stay shining and be blessed. Bye-bye.